As we celebrate 150 years of APHA, what better way to see just how far we've come than by taking a look back at where we started. The APHA was first founded in 1872. Dues were only $5 back then. It wasn't until 15 years later that women were first invited to attend meetings. And since then, the APHA has been doing everything from getting involved in sanitation control to increase public health, all the way to controlling communicable diseases all the way back to the early 1900s. And of course, that's still something we are working on today. Joining me now is incoming APHA president, Chris Chanisolkit, with more on where things stand. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you, good morning. Good morning, so let's talk about the COVID-19 pandemic. As I said, trying to control communicable diseases is something the APHA has been very involved in since 1910. And yet here we are today, where do things stand? APHA is still there. It's still there for all of us working to promote evidence-based research for science, but also really for action, letting people know that what can they do to end this pandemic, but prevent future fan pandemics. And a lot of that looks at voting, advocacy, and also policy making. And we recognize that while we're advocating at the national level, there's so much that's happening at the local level and we're here to support our communities in whatever way we can. Let's turn now and talk a little bit about your upcoming term as president. What are some of the goals and initiatives that you have for this upcoming year? So I have three main goals for this year. I love things in threes. <laughs> I have three kids. APHA is all about for science, for action, for health. So for this year, my first one is to play for health to bring back the social connections, to have people enjoy their life and yes. to, to bring in some physical activity back in. We've been isolated and inside in this pandemic. And then the second is to read for health because there's a lot of misinformation out there, disinformation. We need to improve that in health literacy, but also you can read for enjoyment. Right. Right. <laughs> and that's part of just sort of bring that back, bringing that back. And then the third, and I think probably one of the most important ones I want to emphasize this year is to vote for health because yes. um, voting for health is so important, but not just at the national level. We need to vote up and down the ballot, local elections matter, and honestly, so much of our public health efforts, as we've seen through this display of 150 years of APHA, started at the local level. And we need to make that part of our norm, that everyone is engaged, is at the town halls is fighting the good fight, holding elected officials accountable, and then maybe even having lots of public health practitioners run for office. And that's something that as APHA president, you will be involved with in the upcoming year, talking one-on-one -on -one with a lot of the folks in the public health workforce. What's something you're looking forward to about that face-to-face uh, -face interaction, finally? Well, just the face-to-face -face interaction, <laughs> I think is something I'm looking Valid. forward to. I am really excited because I've missed it. I think, you know, Zoom has been great and has really transformed how we do our work and our, the connections that we make with folks. But I know today, just from having been here for a moment with the annual conference, how rejuvenated my spirit is from these one-to-one -one connections and how meaningful they are, but how they bolster me throughout the year and carry us throughout the hard work that we have to do in public health. Well, congratulations on your Thank upcoming you. role as president and best of luck. Thank you.